Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to show you is how we can find the resultant force acting on a particle when more than two forces act on it. In the past when we've had two forces we've tended to use the vector triangle of forces or resolving methods but with three forces or more we tend to use resolving as the most efficient way. And how do we do that? Well what we think of is breaking this problem down to two components an X and a Y say. Which way do we think that this particle might move? Well I think you'll find that you've got a lot of force towards the right and a lot of force downwards. So what we would set up is X and Y components something like this and we're going to find out what the resultant force is to the right which will be X, the resultant force down in the Y direction and then once we have these components we can form this right angle triangle and work out what our resultant R Newtons is going to be. And we can also find out the angle that it's inclined say to X just by using normal right angle trigonometry. Now if you've got these directions X and Y wrong all that will happen is that you'll get Y say turning out negative or X turning out negative. But if they turn out positive then that's the direction that that resultant will act in. Now let's start this by first of all trying to find out what X is. And to do that we're going to look at how much force then on this system up here acts towards the right. So in other words we're going to resolve to the right. So that resultant force we're saying is X. And what is it going to be equal to? Well all of these three forces are not on this dotted line here, this horizontal dotted line. So we're going to need to split each of these forces into components. So if we start with the 5 newtons that can be split into a component in that direction and one upwards. The one upwards is perpendicular to this direction so it'll have no effect. All that we're interested in is the component of the 5 newtons which pushes towards the right. Well it would include the angle here of 20 degrees and we've said before that if you've got a force that includes an angle it's cosine so we could say 5 cosine 20 would be that component. Now when it comes to the 8 newtons that can be split into two components one in this direction to the right and one downwards. The one downwards has no effect because it's perpendicular to this direction that we're resolving in. But the one towards the right will be 8 cosine 30 because it includes the angle between the force and the direction. So that's plus 8 cos 30 degrees. Now we come on to the 6 newtons and this can be split into two components a force downwards and a force out to the left. The one downwards no effect because it's at right angles to the direction we're resolving but the one to the left contains the angle of 60 degrees between the 6 and the direction that we're resolving in. So it'd be cosine 6 cosine 60 degrees but because it acts to the left it will be negative so it's minus 6 cos 60 degrees. Okay now all you need to do then is type this into your calculator and you'll find that you get out 8.6266 6, 6, and so on newtons. Right now all that we've got to do is find out what y is. So to do that we're going to resolve in the direction of y so in other words we'll just resolve downwards and that resultant force we're saying is going to be y. So y equals and we'll go around the three forces again. I'm going to start off with a 6 this time purely because it will give us a positive value as you'll see in a minute. 
Six then can be split into two components, one to the left, one downwards. The one to the left now isn't needed because it's perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in. We just want the one down here. So that means that between the force and this direction, we're excluding this 60 degrees. So when you exclude an angle, it's sine. 6 sine 60. Now, you could use this angle, which is 30 degrees, and include it so it would be 6 cos 30. It will give you the same answer, but as I've said it many times in the past, I always prefer to use the, the, the angle that we're given. So 6 sine 60 then acts in the y direction. For the 8 newtons, we can split that into two components, one horizontal, one downwards. The horizontal one has no effect. Downwards, it's going to be 8 sine 30 because we're excluding this 30 degrees in this 90 degree angle. So plus 8 sine 30. Or you could say cosine of 60 degrees. Now we come on to the 5 newtons, two components, one to the right, one upwards. The one to the right, no effect because it's at right angles. The one upwards would be 5 sine 20 degrees because it excludes the angle of 20 degrees. It would be minus though because it acts in the opposite sense to the direction here. So minus 5 sine 20 degrees. Okay, and if you work this one out on your calculator, what you'll get is 7.4860 and so on newtons. Now, as I said earlier, if, for instance, we had put y, say, upwards, this would have come out at minus 7.4860 and so on. This would have been a minus, minus here, this would have been a plus. If it came out at minus, all we've got to do is just realize that y had to be turned round. It acts in the opposite direction. And then we could redraw it. All right? Now that we have x and y, though, we can work off this triangle and get the final resultant force. So now that we have our two forces, x and y, all we need to do then to work out r is use Pythagoras' theorem, which is going to be the square root then of the sum of the squares of x and y. So in other words, we just square 8.6266 and so on squared, add it to y squared, 7.4860 and so on squared. Okay, work that out and you should find that you get 11.4. 421 and so on. And say, let's round that to three significant figures. That'd be 11.4 newtons to 3SF. All right. Now, all we need to do is find the angle that the resultant here acts, say, to either X or Y. It normally will tell you in any question. And uh, I'm just, I've just chosen to the x direction here. So uh, if we're working out uh, theta, you could use any of the trigonometric ratios, sine, cos, or tan. We tend to use tan, though, okay, because it's independent of this answer here, for instance. But, you know, you could use sine or cos. It's up to you. So if I was to say tan theta, tan theta would equal y over x. So we would have our y value then as 7.4860 and so on. And that's being divided by our x value of 8.6266 and so on. If you work that out and take the inverse tan of it, you'll find that you'd therefore have theta equals 40.950 and so on degrees. So if we were to round that up, say, to three significant figures, you're going to get 41.0 degrees to 3SF. All right. So I hope that's given you some idea then of how we can go about 
finding the resultant force when we've got several forces acting on a particle, generally more than two. Okay, um, I'll have another example for you to try in the next video. So uh, see how you get on with that.